What happened to Procol Harum? The history of Procol Harum is as complicated as their triumph. At the age of 14, drummer Mick Brownlee, guitarist Robin Trower, bassist Chris Copping, singer Bob Scott, and pianist Gary Brooker founded the Paramounts at their school. The group continued to perform after its members graduated, finding some success performing rock and roll hits in local youth clubs under Brooker's leadership. By 1962, they had a residency at the Shades Club in South End. Early in 1963, Brown Lee left the group and Barry J. Wilson, sometimes known as B.J. Wilson, who had responded to a Melody Maker ad, took his place. Nine months later, bassist Chris Copping decided to leave the music industry and Diz Derek took his place. The Paramounts were signed to the Parlophone label with producer Ron Richards the following month after their EMI audition was made possible by their demo record. Ron Richards is best known for his work with the Hollies. When the Paramounts issued their debut single, Poison Ivy, in January 1964, it peaked at number 35 on the British charts and received significant support from the Rolling Stones, who dubbed them as their favorite British R&B group. However, none of the group's subsequent singles achieved chart success and the Paramounts disbanded in September 1966. Brooker decided to concentrate on his songwriting, which led to his collaboration with lyricist Keith Reed, whom he had met through R&B mogul Guy Stevens. They started assembling a band to play their tunes in the spring of 1967 after having a sizable song catalog. The Pinewoods, which featured singer and pianist Brooker, Matthew Fisher on organ, Ray Royer on guitar, Dave Knights on bass, and Bobby Harrison on drums, were founded as a result of an advertisement in Melody Maker. Their debut album was A Wider Shade of Pale a piece of surreal poetry by Reed that Brooker loosely adapted from Johann Sebastian Bach's Air on a G-String from Suite No. 3 in D Major. It was produced by Denny Cordell. The Pinewoods had changed their name to Procol Harum by the time this tape was ready for distribution. Early in May, Cordell coordinated the single's release on the Durham label. A Wider Shade of Pill was one of the renowned offshore pirate radio stations in England that Cordell had delivered a clip. Durham hastily released the single in the middle of May after Radio London received an avalanche of requests for the song following initial spins. On June 4, 1967, at the Seville Theatre in London, Procol Harum performed their first concert, serving as Jimi Hendrix's opening act only the sixth recording act in the history of British popular music to do so on their first release. A wider shade of pale topped their British charts four days later and remained there for six weeks. The record sales in America increased to over a million copies the following month when it peaked at number five on the American charts and six million worldwide. Royer and Harrison were fired as the album reached its American peak and Robin Trower on guitar and B.J. Wilson on drums, Brooker's former Paramount's bandmates, took their plates. The second single, Hamburg, was released in October 1967 on EMI's Regal Zonophone label. It peaked at number 6 on the British charts and reached position 34 in America, establishing Pro Call Harem as a real band. Due to the inclusion of a wider shade of pale, the group's debut album, Pro Call Harem peaked at number 47 in the American charts in October 1967. However, a British release of the album that omitted the hit song failed to generate significant sales. At the 13th annual Ivor Novello Awards on March 26, 1968, A Wider Shade of Pill won International Song of the Year. However, the group's subsequent song, Quite Rightly So, only peaked at number 50 in England. Shine On Brightly, the group's second album, was released in November after they signed a new American record deal with A&M Records. Although it reached number 24 in America, it was not a hit in England. They performed at the Miami Pop Festival the next month in front of 100,000 spectators alongside Chuck Berry, Canned Heat, Fleetwood Mac, and the Turtles. In March 1969, David Knights and Matthew Fisher exited the lineup shortly after finishing work on the album A Salty Dog. 
Nice departure opened the way for Paramount's bassist Chris Copping to join Pro Call Harem, playing bass and organ. Another American tour followed the next month, and in June 1969, a Salty Dog was issued. Combining high-energy blues and classical influences, it returned the band to the U.S. charts at number 32, while the title song ascended the British charts to number 44. The album subsequently reached number 27 in England, the group's first long player to chart in their own country. It was a year before their next album, Home, which was released in June 1970, ascending to the American number 34 in the British 49 spot. This marked the end of the group's contract with Regal Zonophone, and upon the release of Broken Barricades in July 1971, they were on Chrysalis in England. It reached number 32 in America and number 41 in England and also marked the departure of Robin Trower who organized his own group, which had great success in America throughout the 1970s. In the same month that Dave Ball, who took over for Trower, arrived, the lineup also gained Alan Cartwright on bass, allowing Chris Coppy to focus only on the organ. The Edmonton Symphony Orchestra and the Decamera Singers joined this iteration of the band on November 18, 1971 in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada for a concert. The performance served as the group's most successful LP release, peaking at number 5 and bringing in thousands of new fans. It was released as an official live album in 1972. Conquistador, a song taken from the live album, reached number 16 in America and number 22 in England that summer. The group's lineup was again thrown into turmoil in September when Dave Ball left Pro Call Harem to join Long John Baldry's band. He was replaced by Mick Grabham, formerly of the groups Plastic Penny and Cochise. The band's next album, Grand Hotel, was a rich melodic collection that featured guest backing vocals by Christian Lee Grand of the Swingle Singers. The LP peaked at number 21. Six months later, AM released the first compilation of the band's material, Best of Pro Call Harem. The group's next two albums, 1974's Exotic Birds and Fruit and 1975's Pro Calls Ninth, the latter produced by rock and roll songsmiths Jerry Lieber and Mike Stoller, performed moderately well and Pandora's Box from Pro Calls Ninth became a hit in England, rising to number 16. July 1976 saw Alan Cartwright leave the band as Chris Copping took over on bass while Pete Soley joined as a keyboard player. 1977, Something Magic barely scraped the U.S. charts upon release, and the band split up following a farewell concert at New York's Academy of Music on May 15, 1977. Only five months later, Pro Call Harem was back together for a one-off performance of A Wider Shade of Pale. Apart from Trower, Gary Brooker was the most visible of the former Pro Call Harem members, releasing three solo albums between 1979 and 1985. Meanwhile, B.J. Wilson died in October 1990 after a period of ill health following a drug overdose. In August 1991, Brooker reformed Pro Call Harem with Trower, Fisher, Reed, and drummer Mark Brzezinski. The album Prodigal Stranger was released and an 11-city tour of North America took place in September 1991. This lineup didn't last and Brooker offered a new version of Pro Call Harem featuring himself, guitarist Jeffrey Whitehorn, keyboard man Don Snow, and Brzezicki on drums. This group toured the United States in 1992. Pro Call Harem were inactive for several years before a 30th anniversary show was played in Surrey, followed by an open-air concert at New London Symphonia in 2000. A live DVD appeared in 2002, followed a year later by a studio album entitled The Wells on Fire. The band featured Brooker, Fisher, Jeff Whitehorn on guitar, Matt Pegg on bass, and Mark Brzezicki on drums. Roger Taylor guested on backing vocals on some of the shows. 
They played festival gigs in the U.S. and recorded the audio slash video package live at the Union Chapel in London. Fisher left the band in 2004, and the following year, Josh Phillips took over the Hammond organ chair he vacated, leaving Brooker as the only original member. This version of the group played sporadic gigs over the next 12 years, booking standalone shows or teaming up with symphony orchestras around Europe. They also underwent another personnel change as Jeff Dunn replaced Brzecki on drums. In 2010, Procol Harum accompanied Jethro Tull on their U.S. tour. After being nominated for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame but not getting admitted, they went on another U.S. tour in 2012, this time opening for Yes. Procol Harum performed an orchestral concert at the Royal Festival Hall to a sold-out crowd in 2017 to mark the start of their 50th year. Brooker collapsed during the first half of the program, suffering injuries to his head and right hand. It was his third such incident since 2007. Unfazed, he came back for the second half dressed in bandages. The same year, Novum, Procol Harum's first album of brand new studio recordings in 13 years was released. All tracks, with the exception of two, had lyrics written by Pete Brown. In the spring of 2018, Still There Will Be More, an anthology 1967-2017, was released as an official limited edition deluxe box set. Compromising five CDs and three DVDs, the collection presented key tracks from the entirety of the band's career, as well as live concerts from 1973 and 1976. The DVDs featured over three and a half hours of footage from 1967 to 1977. Also included was a 68-page hardback book with an essay by Patrick Humphreys and previously unseen photographs and memorabilia from Brooker's private collection. While the COVID-19 pandemic forced the band to put their touring activities on hold in 2020, they used the time to write and record new music, and a three-track EP, Missing Persons Alive Forever, was released in May 2021. After leading the band for over 50 years, Gary Brooker died on February 19, 2022 after a battle with cancer, effectively ending Procol Harum. And that's what happened to Procol Harum. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And give me some facts about the band I failed to mention. And who should I do next on the channel? Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.